Hello, my name is James Moore and welcome to Technology Tuesdays. This time we'll be talking about 10 hacks and gadgets for the online professor. Do you ever feel like you're in need of a jetpack, but all around of boulders? Technology promises to make education cheaper, faster and better. However, most educators are faced with the Sisyphean task of discovering the right technology in an endless landscape in which technology constantly changes is more expensive than expected, and perhaps fails completely in actually being useful. Here then are some relatively simple hacks and gadgets the online learning professor can adopt into her or his daily practices. The stereotypical professor retires to a multi-monitor techno cave to grade. On one screen, student work is displayed, on the other screen, the professor efficiently provides guidance and encouragement. However, the same stereotypical online professor travels the globe with a laptop, perhaps attending conferences and just maybe teaching from the beach. Here, the single screen becomes a frustrating limit, forcing the professor to toggle between applications or attempt to cram open windows into a tightly constrained environment. Rather than endure this pain, the savvy online professor can connect an iPad to a laptop via the lightning cable and convert the iPad into an extended desktop. An extended desktop is a feature in a computer that allows a user to extend viewing capabilities by using two or more monitors at the same time. So with this type of setup, you can enter your grades or feedback on one screen whilst looking at student work on the other screen. The software that does this is Duet, which handily works on both Mac and PC. The client for Mac and PC is a free download, and the iOS app is about $20. This, though, requires a lightning cable, so please check your iDevice before making the purchase. The Skype for Web plugin allows you to run Skype directly from within most modern web browsers. But a safer plan to bring Skype to the classroom is to install Skype Portable on a USB drive and then carry a webcam like the Logitech C920. You can then plug these two devices into classroom PCs without having to worry about administrator access or passwords. And you can then bring your guest speaker to any classroom that has internet access. You can download Portable Skype from the Portable Apps website. There are many other programs there on this website that you can assist you in your teaching. So let's say you need to edit and convert video. At some point you'll have to do this. The perfect free program for simple edits and conversion is MPEG Stream Clip which has both versions for Mac and PC. The editing capabilities are sufficient to cut, copy, and paste clips, but the more transformative feature is the ability to convert video into pretty much every known format and screen dimension, with the added ability of sometimes downloading video directly from sites like YouTube. You can also use free programs that come bundled with your computer operating system. On the Mac, we have iMovie, and on the Windows PC, we have Movie Maker, which is cancelled and soon to be replaced by Story Remix. So, although these programs don't have the same rich format conversion options that MPEG Stream Clip has, if you do need to convert content from a DVD, then Handbrake can assist in ripping that file to your computer to be edited later. Now every professor has a collection of audio and video files that should be transcribed. These files might be interviews waiting to be transformed into published works, or lecture material that needs to be made accessible to students with disabilities. Historically, the process of transcribing has been both cumbersome and costly, but YouTube has vastly improved the options for educators. The process here is you can upload an audio or video file to YouTube and YouTube will automatically create a transcript that you can edit and download. 
YouTube doesn't accept an ordinary audio file, but you can get around this by using iMovie, Movie Maker, or Story Remix to merge your audio file with an image and then export this as a video. When you upload this to YouTube, the automated transcripts that are created are largely accurate, but they do need some editing. Thankfully, the editing interface here is efficient and intuitive. At this point, you then have the option to download the transcript into one of three common formats, VTT, SRT, or SBV. These files are not plain text and need to have timing information and metadata stripped out if the actual text is required. And the easiest way to do this is to use the SRT file in a subtitle editor and export the transcript as a .txt file. An AG sub is the free editor that works on both Mac and PC that can do this. So just to reiterate, the steps to follow here are to convert your audio file to a .m4v file, upload that to YouTube, and then edit and correct the automated subtitles that YouTube creates for you. You then download that .srt file to, to your computer. You open that file in AGSub, and when you have that file in there, you can then export that as plain text, a .txt file. This file then can be opened up in any other application that you have and used as you see fit. So AGSub is a free download, and you can download that from the website here. So there are several well-designed screencasting programs for both Mac and PC, such as ScreenFlow or Camtasia. But these are programs that you need to purchase. There are, however, free and easy ways to do basic recording from your computer. And to pull, we have the option of using Panopto for basic recording and editing. On the Mac, the easiest way to do this free of charge is via QuickTime. QuickTime is already installed on your Mac computer and can be found in the Applications folder. Simply launch QuickTime and then click on Choose File and New Screen Recording. You can also use the same program to record from an iPad or an iPhone connected by your lightning cable. If you need to edit the recording, you can use MPEG Streamflip or iMovie. Windows 10 does have the ability to screencast via the built-in Xbox Game Bar, an application designed for the recording of sharing of clips of exploits in computer games. However, I found the interface to be a little bit difficult to use. It doesn't work so well because it's focused on recording a particular single screen window or application and occasionally game bar results in failed screencast recordings. So bold users could attempt to use game bar, but perhaps a safer course of action is to download the free VLC media player and use the capture desktop mode. If you're using a Chromebook, you may find Screencastify the best option to screencast. So you may, from time to time, have a need to record your classroom lectures. I carry a Sansa clip with me at all times. The Sansa clip is a small MP3 player with an integrated audio recorder and FM radio. I believe this to be about the best all-purpose device for recording audio in the classroom. The Sansa clip works as my backup device. If traditional classroom recording methods fail, I at least have a high quality audio recording with me. Now the Sansa clip can be affixed to a shirt or jacket, thus allowing the presenter to walk around without fear of moving out of recording range. The Sansa clip has the capacity to record many hours of content. Recordings are saved as high quality WAV files and can be imported onto your computer via USB drive. 
the USB connection charges the SANS Eclipse battery. Typically, you can expect somewhere between 12 to 15 hours of recording time on a full charge. Unfortunately, the latest SANS Eclipse, the Sport and the Jam, no longer have the recording ability, but older models are available to purchase online. A more complicated method I use to record the classes I teach is the combination of screen flow and a Mevo camera. This I'll talk about in another session, but the advantage of this process is I can share video of what I present on my computer and video showing the room context to my students. It's happened to all of us. You're at a conference, a hotel, or teaching in a new classroom. There's an ethernet connection in the room, but Wi-Fi is not available. You may be traveling with a 30 foot long ethernet cable, but chances are this isn't the case. You could use your smartphone as a hotspot, but an easier option is to invest in a cheap RavPower FileHub Plus or Hutu TripMate Elite wireless travel router. These battery powered routers create their own Wi-Fi networks and can be used to bridge an existing ethernet connection as well as sharing files if you plug in a USB drive. Each time I teach a class, I tell my students to post on the discussion board what they would normally ask me via email. The exception to this is when the question is personal and best served by email or requires an immediate response. I found that Doing this greatly reduces the time answering repetitive questions, and the answers that I and the students post create more presence online. My practice also is to copy my responses from email or the discussion board to a cloud-based note-taking app like Evernote or OneNote, and then tag these responses with keywords for later retrieval. So if a similar question comes up in another course, I can quickly find my earlier response and then use that in my reply. Each time I repurpose content, I make a note of it. The more frequent notes suggesting that I should better clarify comments in the course syllabus, content, or FAQs. For discussion board content that will be graded, I provide a simple three-point rubric, the equivalent of good, better, and best. This greatly simplifies and speeds up the process of grading. To provide a structured example of what I'm looking for in the class discussion, I share an anonymized perfect post from a student from an earlier class. I then reduce the quality of the student example to demonstrate what I consider lesser responses. When I want the students to demonstrate originality, I configure the discussion board to only allow the viewing of other student work after a first post is made. However, all this structure doesn't guarantee that the students will be closely reading the posts of other students. To incentivize students, I do two things. I provide a summary of the posts that indicates where the discussion was most on target and then I base some of my midterm and final exam questions on the graded discussion. My daily routine starts with a quick review of my RSS aggregator. Here I have several categories of news feeds along with some scripts that grab content from customized Twitter lists and searches. Rather than having to visit several websites, the RSS aggregator places all this content in one easily viewable location. Then, when I see something that's worthy of sharing with my students, I can simply click on a button to pass this on via email, Twitter, or Evernote. My particular practice here is to use Feedly as the RSS aggregator service, and Reader as the desktop and mobile client that improves the interface and sharing options. 
However, Feedly has its own apps for iOS and Android. In a similar fashion, I use TweetDeck to automate targeted search on particular keywords relating to my interests and class topics. If I find something of note, this can be retweeted or shared with my students. Occasionally, you may find a need to add a touch of levity to your communication, be it via email, Twitter, or your learning management system. Animated GIFs can be your friend here. These are short videos encapsulated in an image file that can be shared without the concern that the receiving party will not be able to play them due to file format issues. Giphy is an easy to use repository of such videos in which you can search or waste time for the right meme to share. It also has straightforward ways to copy, download, or share with your students. The service also has the ability for you to upload a video that you've created and then convert this into an animated GIF to share. Anyway, this was 10 productive hacks and gadgets for professors. You can find more resources and videos on the Tech Tuesdays website at condor.depaul.edu slash jmore slash tech.